You're listening to the Ones Ready Podcast, a team of Air Force Special Operators forged in combat with over 70 years of combined operational experience as well as a decade of selection instructor experience. If you're tired of settling and you want to do something you truly believe in, you're in the right place. Now here's your host, PJ team leader, jujitsu lover, meme enthusiast, and dad joke aficionado, Aaron Love. Hey everyone, welcome to the Ones Ready Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. Just so you know, This is going to be a short episode, right around 30 minutes or so, because we ran into some technical difficulties, uh, meaning our Wi-Fi cut out and one of the computers crashed. So we kind of got cut short and then we we couldn't recover the computer. So we had stopped where we were at. But we wanted to get the information out to you. So that's why we're putting it out anyway. And we're not waiting until Saturday. We're just dumping it as soon as the editing is complete. So with that, also want you to check out Strike Force Energy. Um, they are chock full of caffeine. You're looking at 160 milligrams per packet. Um, you guys can get four different flavors, uh, grape, lemon, orange, and then the original. Um, they are packed with B, vitamin B6, B12, and you can get them in variety packs. 10 packs, or if you really, you know, want to go all in, they've got 40 counts. Um, And I guess even more so, if you really want to get crazy with it, they have pump bottles, which I haven't dove into yet, but I imagine that's a little bit crazy. You got to be pretty dedicated to the cause to go with the pump bottle. They also have apparel and gear and stickers and all that kind of stuff. If you guys want to check them out, but strikeforceenergy.com and promo codes ones ready. We'll get you a discount on all of that gear. So thanks again. And then enjoy the rest of the podcast. That was one of the worst claps we've ever done, but I'm going to blame it on Peaches Wi-Fi. Peaches is joining us along with me and Trent down from beautiful, beautiful Alabama. Uh, He is down getting professionally developed. So that professional military education, you think it's over and they keep pulling you back in. Peaches is trying to make E10 out of this bad boy. Oh (laughs) man, that hurts. We just want to say, hey, thanks to everybody that's been following along. We really appreciate appreciate you guys. You may or may not have noticed we put out a bunch of stories and we've been trying to get the word out there. We got merch. We got merch in the store. We got merch on merch on merch for days and days. So we swipped up uh, and we switched up (laughs) the shipping methods. That's actually really hard to say. Switched up the the shipping method methods. We went to a different company that we're using for shipping. So that's the reason why the delay. But we got everything. We got shirts. We got flags. We got hats. We got beanies. If you're going to show up to a training event, what are you supposed to have? Something to write on, something to write with, right? We got that for you. If you want to flex that OR, and we got everything, different colorways for us. You know how we dig that black on white. So we got white on black. We got black on white. We got all kinds of colors. Rep your tribe. Go and pick. You got Peaches wearing the, the Peaches tee that he's got right now. We got plenty of those. If you want to rep that Peaches tee, shout out to Kinetic Perspective. Appreciate you for making that for us. You're the man. Um, but it, it's all on there. You guys got anything you want to say about the merch? When are we going to get the... Uh... The little peaches on there. I can't wait. The little peaches. Isn't that redundant? Is it little peaches redundant? It's little, it, and it is a thick boy too. Like that thing is just full of fluff. Uh, unlike I don't know how app. much. I don't know how much demand there would be for that. I think there'd be a lot so of much demand. demand. <laughs> There's so much demand. I'll, I'll tell you that when we did the live, the most popular part of the live was actually the peaches. Um, it wasn't even Trent and I. People weren't watching for that at all. It was just for you. <laughs> no, I guess the uh, the only other thing that I would add to that since we're talking about. Uh, you know, fluffy, fluffy toys and stuff like that is we also have blankets on there. And like, I got my wife blanket and I know Trent, you got your wife blanket. Like those things are legit. They, they are incredibly soft. Uh, my wife's hanging out under the blanket all the time. So if you uh, need to warm up this winter, grab a hoodie, grab a beanie, grab a blanket and get you some. That's two five-star reviews right there out the gate. Yeah. Two five-star reviews. And I want to take this time to remember uh, or to remind everybody, remember, I can't talk today. We should just delete this and start over, but getting made fun of online is one of my favorite pastimes anyway. So we'll just, we'll just leave it. We don't edit anything on here, so screw it. But I do want to say thanks for everybody that's been leaving reviews, going to the YouTube, hitting the channel up, spreading the podcast word. We really appreciate it. So just keep doing that. Leave us a five-star review and it actually does help. It helps us kind of climb those charts and get the word out there, which is the whole reason why we're there. Speaking of cold weather, you like that segue, Trent? It's, Dude, that was good. It, thanks. It's freezing up in the Northwest. You know where it wasn't freezing was San Antonio. 
So as you guys saw, Trent and I were together for you know almost a week. It was like seven straight days of, of the Trent and Aaron show. It was fantastic. The whole reason why we were there was, was a couple different reasons, right? We went there to talk about the soft Shura and we're going to start there and and we got to see the spaces and, and we're going to talk about some things going on on the ground, ground truth down at the aspect where training wing and, and JBSA and, and Chapman in total. Now, this is the first time that Peaches has heard any of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about it and Peaches might have some questions because we didn't really get a chance to fill them in. We've all been in the wind. I was, I wasn't even back home before Peaches left and we've trying to been, you know, trying to catch up on the group chats and stuff, but nothing like a face-to-face -face conversation. So you know, we'll just start it off. The the soft Shura, in case you didn't know, we explained this, but Shura is, is a, I believe it's a Pashtun word for meeting. It means getting everybody together, or sometimes it's called a KLE, a key leader engagement. The thing about this that was really, really interesting is that for the first time, I believe ever, all of the special operations communities, so Navy, Army, Marine Corps, they sent their training heads down. So the people that run their pipelines, their assessment selections, their recruiters, the people that get the word out about their programs, the Air Force brought them down to Joint Base San Antonio, and they talked and shared best practices and way forward and some really, really, I'd say, mind-blowing changes to all of the pipelines that, that might be coming up soon. Uh, Trent, I've never seen anything like that. I've, I've obviously been around for different things where we bring combat control in or... or you know, special reconnaissance in, but I've never seen all four services in one place. That was a pretty big deal to me. How did, how did you feel about it? Yeah, well, I think it's a fairly recent development and um, maybe like last year they might've done it. I don't know. I don't, I just don't think it's been going on that long, uh, but yeah, I think it's a good idea because we're, I, I know at the operational level and tactical level, we're always talking to our sister service uh, counterparts that do, uh, you know, similar, but different things and, and, and finding those best practices and all that other stuff. So it, stands to reason that the leadership would get together and uh, and bring all their best ideas that they've stolen from all of their E6s to the table uh, to discuss. <laughs> Absolutely. Just stealing them straight from the, those pipe hidden E6 and, you know, E5, senior E5 and junior E6 that are actually making it happen. So, uh, Peaches, I I'll tell you, just look from looking around the room. I mean, we had no kidding. And it, this wasn't just lackeys. This wasn't just those you know, no offense to mid-grade captain and low-grade majors, but those really aren't the decision makers for the for some of these organizations. We're talking, you know, Navy SEAL colonels. You know, we're talking E9s with, you know, seven, eight deployments and 20 years of service that are now running those training and accession pipelines. I, I know from your angle, you see these things differently as an E9 and being involved in these conversations for a couple of years now. How do you think um, that we can move forward from something like that. Like you've seen these meetings happen. What do you think the most important thing uh, to focus on for everybody moving out of one uh, a meeting like this is? I don't necessarily know that it's something to focus on. I think, you know, the whole point of that is, and you brought it up, is to get best practices because everybody's got different things that they value. Like, for example, and I don't know if you guys covered this, but I, I just know this from discussions that I've had with some of our uh, Navy spec war um, compatriots but like they value running a lot of running and you would think it'd be swimming like we we at least historically tend to really value swimming whereas they think that they are able to identify the best candidate by running and the army i, I don't actually don't know off the top of my head but like from what i understand those are some of the things that you guys discuss there and then you bring in other independent organizations, like, of course, you're going to have your, your public affairs and that kind of stuff, but sure. you're also going to have your, your people that are doing like RAND, doing, doing studies and, and compiling all that information to then like, no kidding, figure out. Because again, like we value swimming a lot more than say the army does. Apparently the Navy values running and that's their, their kind of data points to say, this individual has a better chance of making it through buds and, you know, same for us. So yep. um, I, th I think it's really, it's, it's the important stuff is networking and figuring out best practices because if, I mean, a lot of times, yeah, we are, you know, trying to not necessarily, well, we'll just say reinvent the wheel, you know, um, come up with some some profound idea but oftentimes somebody else has already tried it and it failed and hey here's why so that you don't waste the time effort and money to then chase that and go down that direction so that's what i would say 
Right. And from being involved in the, the couple events that we were invited, you know, I was lucky enough to have dinner and, and talk to, we even brought over some Brits. So some guys from the special boat service were over there and, you know, handling their recruiting division. And you were dead on the money with Rand and the psychological aspect of it. Like we're no kidding sitting in a room with everybody and they're no kidding saying like, Hey, this is what this attribute means. How do you look after this attribute? And we do it in different ways. Like the seals do use running as their primary indicator to say, Hey, are you going to be able to pass buds or not? Because when you put a guy in boots and utes and you put him on that beach and they have those soft sand runs, that thing is no joke. I don't, I, you know, if you don't have experience running in soft sand and especially running in soft sand, when you're tired, when you're wet, when you're hungry, when you're covered in sand, that will absolutely break you down. Just absolutely crush you. I remember in leadership and training for the fight, uh, Paul Howe was talking, master and retired Paul Howe was talking about, you know, breaking his body down on the beach and then using mobility and durability to kind of recover himself and build himself, build himself back up. So it makes sense when somebody explains it to you and in the reasoning behind why we like the water so much and what attributes that really brings to the forefront. So it was really interesting to hear that. Uh, another interesting thing that I heard, and I know you have, we, you know, we've talked about this peaches, but you know, there was a quote there where there was a critique of how it is that we're getting after certain things like scout recruit develop. And I heard a very pointed comment uh, about how, you know, right now there's an inflection point where we need to start turning the corner, how we leverage things like social media, how we interact with this new generation of people that are coming in and soft. And I know you guys talked about it at the chief course that you're at Peaches. And I'll just, I'm just, I want to give you the platform because I know you got riled up about it the other day. So, uh, man, what, how do you think that we're leveraging social media correctly and how could we be better if we're not? Man, um, yeah, so so last Friday or, or whatever, I don't know when this is going to launch. So, yeah, we got a chance to sit down with uh, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Bass um, for about an hour and a half, almost two hours. No kidding podcast all- guest. Did you, did you guys say hi? Did she recognize you? I don't think she recognized me at all. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. That's fantastic. <laughs> Probably not. Um, which is fine. She, she can still rep the shirt. So whatever, that's fine. Yeah. Um, but you know, we, we covered a whole bunch of different topics, but one of the things that was brought up is that, you know, we, we get stuck in our ways. Like the, 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 you know, key phrase is, Hey, everybody innovate and innovate and that kind of stuff and figure out new ways of doing things. And really nobody innovates, truly innovates. They, they take something and they kind of change it uh, uh, slightly to, to make it a little better, which is fine, but nobody ever comes, you know, with something new. And it's not to say that social media is new, but historically, most of our folks, at least as an, in an official capacity, has stayed off of social media, has been the, the quote unquote quiet professional, has not told the story of what the airmen have done. Um, and they recognize this and, and the other chiefs, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a class of like 60 other chiefs and they recognize it, you know, not everybody agrees, um, but it, they at least recognize that recruiting efforts are um, lacking in some sort. And we have done a poor job of getting the message out. So, and that social media and, you know, venues and vehicles like podcasts and stuff like that are a good place to do it. So, um, mm-hmm. Again, we got to get everybody on board and there's, you know, you guys experienced, um, I mean, we won't go into details about that, but I'm, I'm, it wouldn't surprise me if you hit a, a little bit of friction or resistance um, to going there. Yeah. I, I don't think we need to bring it up in detail, but like, I know you guys experienced some kind of like, hey, what, I'm sorry, no, we're not doing that. And it's right. like, well, hey, listen, like, this is goodness. And, and let me show you how good it actually is. And you can take a step out of that, that boomer mindset and actually, and, and I'm a boomer, okay, <laughs> right? But, you know, you can start heading a different direction and really engage with, with the folks that you want to come in. I think that's the, the, the dangers of being an early adopter or a, an innovator, right? Is you're always going to run into those things. And it's hard when you sit in your, maybe your own echo chamber and and talk to other people that are like-minded, but you're like, this is obviously positive change. Um, but yeah, you're, you're going to have to, uh, overcome some, some barriers and obstacles and bureaucratic, uh, processes. 
Well, and the funniest part about this is I can't help but go back to the fall of Afghanistan episode with Chief McCoy. And Chief McCoy said it directly. He said, you know, I was told for so long, and this is a tier one operator. This is a guy that worked there, you know, longer in his career than he did anything else. The most of his time he spent at a national mission unit on some of the the most high profile national missions. And he said straight up, you know, maybe we have this whole idea of what a silent professional is completely backwards. Maybe, maybe we have been doing ourselves a disservice because if you go out there right now, everybody in the world knows what a Navy SEAL is. Everybody in the world knows what an Army Green Beret is. It's hard to find 10 people in the Air Force. If I just went out on any normal base and I had this experience uh, in Arizona last weekend, I sat down with an Air Force officer that did contracting. He goes, and, you know, said, hey, you know, what do you do? And we're playing the game. And I said, yeah, I'm a PJ. And he goes, oh, that's really cool. I'll be honest with you. I have no idea what you do. And that guy was in the Air Force. He was a captain in the Air Force. He's like, I just, I mean, I kind of know. I, I know the stories about selection and I know you're there to save people and stuff. But outside of that, uh, I have no idea what you do. And I think there's a happy medium, right? Like we don't want to aggrandize for our own. You don't want to be self-aggrandizing. You don't want to put yourself out there just in order to get yourself attention, right? I, don't, I hate attention seeking behavior as well. However, I think that there's a happy medium out there and leveraging social media and doing some of these these more forward thinking things, I think it's going to be it's going to be tough for some people to get on it. But you know, I, I look at those examples of who I want to be as a PJ. You know, I hope I hope one day somebody looks at me as favorably as I look at Chief McCoy or looking at you know Chief Negron, former podcast you know guest, and he runs SEI Green Feet now in Fusion Cell. And look at the things that he's doing because he is one of those boomer. Uh, type of dudes that has adopted social media and is now leveraging it and has had wild success and it's good for him and he's helping the career field. So I just looked at those examples and I think, you know, people are resistant to it and we'll hit it when we were talking about, you know, being in San Antonio, but you're, you're totally right. Um, you know, and other than that, it was a good time to get the the tribes together and, and really talk about how, how it is that we're going forward, not just in the air force, but as an entire soft enterprise, it was really interesting to hear, and especially talking to the Brits, you know, to the special boat service guys, and to some of those those other odds and ends that were invited to the soft show. It was, I, I got to be honest, I, I was pretty pretty taken aback at the the level and breadth and depth of people that were there. So it was pretty good to so, pretty good. So to let see. me ask you that: like, were there any uh, specific data points that you guys heard from, you know, from the other entities that? kind of was like, oh, that's a that's a good point. We should we should probably incorporate this somehow. I, I gotta be honest, they're having the same problems we are. I'll tell you straight up. It's it's finding those people, it's getting the information out there. It's having real and relevant information and and having that ability to to get it directly to the force. You know, uh having the ability now to directly tweet out every thought you're thinking in your head. Do I need to hear exactly every thought that you're thinking in your head at all times? Probably not. But I'll tell you what, as an information conduit, Everything moves at the speed of Twitter now. And they were lamenting the fact that they can't get out ahead of some of the messaging that's coming out and some of these some of these things that they wish that they could be the one to give to the force. And you heard some of their senior leaders uh, say straight up or you know, through secondhand as one of their one of their lamentations was, hey, you know, we we want to get this messaging out because we want it to be packaged in the right way. And some of those answers to that point where you don't need to package it in the right way. Get the raw information out there. That's the best way. Let the people take the information in for themselves and then decide you don't need to sell the product. Just let them sell, let them sell themselves on the product. And Trent, I don't, I don't know if you heard anything differently. That's, that's kind of what I got. No, I was, uh, I, you were the one that made it to the dinner. I had other <laughs> obligations and responsibilities. So, uh, you had kids, I had barbecue. So yeah, let that be a lesson to you, everybody out there thinking about a family. <laughs> <laughs> not going to say anything about that. I know. I know. So that, that gets us to the, uh, that gets us kind of the end of the soft sure. And that was an awesome event. And then the other reason why we were there and we already sort of hinted at it is, man, we wanted to see what's going on with the ground truth. A lot of the things in the career field, once you get in the career field, and I think people have a, a misperception about this. People think that once you're an operator, you just intimately know what's going on down at Joint Base San Antonio, you know, everything that's going on. Like, guys, we don't have council meetings where we talk about all these decisions and people fill us in. Maybe maybe Chief gets to go to those. I'm not invited to those. Chief, are there are there meetings where they just tell you everything and they just fill you in? Um, it, so within, no, not, <laughs> not completely. Um, 
like so so yes there every six months we have we have you know where all the commanders and all the senior enlisted come together and talk about um you know current current issues or or current challenges and then future challenges um what's kind of on the horizon but it's rare that we actually discuss what is going on in the pipeline because we have so much other stuff that we're worried about um and the only reason that I'm read into everything that's going on or not everything, but, you know, a lot of stuff that's going on uh, in the pipeline is because of the podcast. I mean, literally it forces me to do research, reach out to people that are, that are in the pipeline and go like, Hey, man, what's some of the ground truth? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was the most valuable part of the trip for me was, you know, just walking by students, seeing the spaces, talking to, some of the people that were there at the group and the wing and, uh, you know, shout out to senior fike for walking us around. It was, it was awesome of him. And he was a, a, an old, uh, actual instructor of mine, uh, way back in the day. And now he's working down there and he was nice enough to walk us around the spaces and stuff. So, um, you know, we're going to go from the, we're going to go from the ground here. So Trent and I got to go over to, um, I, I don't know if it's called, is it called LSA extortion or are they calling it camp extortion? Uh, we just call it extortion. I don't okay. know. I don't, I don't throw a lot of fancy <laughs> labels on it. Someone might, but like someone just says, go to extortion. I know where we're going. You know where we're going, right? So uh, if you're not tracking, that's that's where we're going to go, um, you know, for assessment selection. And we got to see, that was new to me, right? We, we'd we seen the special warfare uh, candidate course area, right? What we used to call prep. And that podcast has already dropped. Congratulations. It'll, it'll drop, uh, you know, in two days from now. However, um, we, we got to see those spaces and there was goodness in, in talking about those spaces. And we, we devoted an entire podcast just to talking about SWIC, so SWCC, Special Warfare Candidate Course. Um, but I was actually really impressed by just the area, the setup. You're over there in your own corner at Extortion, the facilities, the obstacle courses right there. That I was actually pretty, pretty astounded by that, um, not only seeing what it was, but seeing what it's going to be, seeing the builds, seeing the spaces seeing where the students were running around. That was news to me. And I hadn't, I was not even tracking. When we started driving over there, I was like, where are we going? Uh, Peaches, do you remember where the old obstacle course was over on Lackland? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's where, that's where it is. Yeah. It's over, it's over uh, extortion named after the, the extortion crash that killed the largest number of special operators in, in the history of warfare. Um, but we saw that those spaces and I, I was pretty, I was pretty astounded really to, to see the instructors and see the students running around there. And I, I don't know what you had to say about a Trent, but I, I dug it. I was excited, but then again, I get excited by little things. So there you go. Yeah. I, it's hard for me to not get like bogged down in history. I'm like, Hey, well actually that space was first developed as the, uh, the prep section right before prep moved into one of the old BMT buildings. But um, I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things as, as the training wing uh, the training group first, and then the wing uh, stood up and was, uh, moving out on these projects and uh, overhauling the assessment selection and the, the prep programs or the SWIC program. Um, it, it, they've done a lot of good stuff. And I, I think it's easy for us sometimes to be like, Hey, like you're not to go in there and, 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 you know, pick out things that we, we may disagree with, which we may not fully understand, but the fact that we have that much space dedicated to training and the assault course that we have for that. And uh, you know, and and everything that they're able to do out there with the uh, the candidates, it's it's pretty remarkable. And and a whole lot of work and blood, sweat, and tears has gone into that. And and you know maybe some internal fighting and arguing. But the fact of the matter is, is we did not own space really on Lackland at all. And now uh, we have that entire area over extortion and um, the the whole prep area. So we've come a long way as far as uh, you know. We, we've got the spaces, we've got the the training areas, and we keep refining the process and. Um, you know, we've actually seen a, a, a decent uptick in, in student production. So overall, I, I would say it's a wholly positive from my view. So the, um, and, and Trent, I know that when I was in San Antonio for that, you know, couple of days, you, you took me over there. That's the same space that you took me over to, right? Did we go to, yeah, because we went to prep first and then we just yeah. drove over to the other place real quick. So do, yeah. do the students, do the students stay over there or do they staying at the, the kind of where prep is or you know what i'm saying at that old barracks do we, do we i don't know i'm not sure how much of ans we're supposed to talk about oh no oh, never mind oh no oh no not bad. we're right up on the line where do the students I'll stay fl- well, i'll flog myself later tune in later after we ask and make sure that we understand what we're talking about 
I mean, it's uh, I think during ANS you're going to stay in like a more tactical environment to uh, okay. to get used to that kind of stuff. Is is yeah. I don't know. Okay, I just so, don't so I, I, I do want to <laughs> I do want to explain like why we're like we're not purposely dancing around the topic here, right? We are, as you all know, we're still active duty, or all the all the listeners, we're still active duty, right? Which means that um, we're limited on what we can say uh, to maintain the integrity of ANS and the pipeline. At the same time, as a as a wins ready podcast, we want to make sure that we. Um, maintain and, and foster a, a healthy relationship with special warfare training wing, training group, and all that kind of stuff. So, like for example, when that whole fifty thousand dollar signing bonus came out, like we knew well ahead of time, um, and we wanted to announce it, but we were we were asked, "Hey, please don't say anything about it because of X, Y, and Z reasons," right? Same with some of the other stuff, like you'll find out that with the SWIC thing, like when we recorded it, it was going to be one name and we recorded it and we called it one name. Turns out it didn't end up finally being that name. So we got a little ahead of ourselves in it. So we're not trying to be coy. We're not trying to hide information. It's just trying to be good partners with the special warfare training wing and a special warfare training group. That's all it is. Man, you really learned a lot from this Chiefs course. You are that so is, developed I gotta, right now. I got to be honest. That you just absolutely crushed that. Like I feel it wasn't even a knife hand. That was just was like a, a fist with a. It was a. Fist that's what I've a, learned. I I don't have to do knife hand anymore. I can do the the politician. You know, because they know what's coming. Thumb. It's well, the knife hand is cocked. This is essentially well, it the, is cocked. The, you can the just... locked and loaded. Yeah, bang! Look at that. Just <laughs> <got it. laughs> bunch actually, of idiots. <laughs> That's actually, that's actually pretty good. That's actually pretty good in sync too. Um, you know, if, if, if we follow this tour kind of along chronologically, we went over to, to Chapman. So we went over to the Chapman training annex, which back in the day, and again, this, I, I can't say it too much. I think I'm using too much hyperbole here, but looking at what the spaces used to be, right. The place where the new, um, what Trent, what's the name of it? So I don't screw this up. The, the, place where everybody works out it's a really nice gym while they're waiting it, for their next school yeah so hpsg resides in there right okay. the human performance folks and then also the uh uh the wing developers that you know work out the students in between courses i'm not sure what they're actually calling it right now okay you used to call it the no i'm not even gonna say it because that place apparently, is nice dude, yeah. well that place used to be a chow hall when i was going through indoc that's where we ate chow and it was not great. And then you were going next door to those Navy dorms that were, they used to be the, the essentially defunct uh, dorms that the Navy had, that they were like, these are garbage. We got to move out of them. And they were like, perfect. That's a great place for students. And then there were some more dorms next to them that also were then condemned. And they were like, hey, perfect. Now we've got a ton of space before the new dorms were there. To, to go and to see the new dorms, which were put up, uh, 2007, 2008 time frame, uh, 2005, 2006 time frame. I think they were they were pretty new when I went through uh, in doc the second time in 2005 or 2006, whenever that was. Um, but to see the 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 spaces and those facilities, and we have a ton of pictures that we're going to put out here as we drop the podcast about SWIC and all these other things. I was shocked. That is a world class facility. I cannot believe that the students get to work out there every single day. Now they're. There are some things about that facility that the students don't like. And we did through, uh, you know, we get a lot of DMs and a lot of talks. And here's just, I'm going to go off on a tangent just for a second. Yes. It, when we were walking around the area, we got DMs that no kidding said, hey, I thought that was you. We were going to come up and say hi, but we decided not to. Don't do that. Come up and say hi <laughs> to us. Trent and I both got mad. Like we were both like, no, go say hi to Aaron. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> don't get trent in trouble go up and take a selfie with trent and then immediately i'll give you the uh, the email address to send it to you that'll get him in the most trouble but you know when we were walking around those spaces i was taken aback by you know how many how many improvements have been made to that area to include there was a huge ditch that was being built out back and i was like what's that ditch for it's for the brand new pool it's to have the huge aquatic training center that is right there on compound just down the hill from Forbes Hall. Like that's ridiculous. That is insane to me. No more, you know, bus rides across base or going to the Skylark. Not saying the Skylark wasn't the best pool in the world, but I'm relatively sure that's where COVID came from. 
or something else that like maybe Ebola. So like Ebola that. Yeah. Nightma- nightmares came from there. Dude, nightmares did come from there. The Skylark was just terrible. It was always broken and leaking and it was just not, it was not meant for what we have, but we're building our own facility now. Um, and, and to go through those HP SG spaces and look at the sheer amount of people and equipment and expertise that live in that building, it's unbelievable. I, I was just absolutely shocked at at how professional that place was. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I shouldn't even be on this podcast because all I'm like is like, don't forget, kids, the years <laughs> and the amount of paperwork it takes to get all this stuff done. <laughs> no, like, you're you know, tough. like that's what I'm that's what I'm familiar with. I'm like <laughs> right. that two tank solution that they're building. Like you don't even understand the nightmare that we had to go through to get right. that done. So, like, I get everybody that has uh, some of the students have you know complaints and all that other stuff, but I mean. Once those those that pool is in and like all the logistics are figured out and like you don't have to bust people back and forth. And if a pool breaks, then, you know, throwing people in the pool at, at random times and and more people in the pool than we need to. It's a uh, we're on the right track. I think that's what I'm trying to say. We're did, on the right track. And it's, did you say there's complaints? Yeah. So I, I was going to hit that here in a second. So for, for those of you that didn't know, the pipeline has changed a little bit for how long it is you stay at Joint Base San Antonio right? In the end state, it's going to be the best thing in the world because you're going to have literally the world, like all of these great things that everybody's like, holy cow, I can't, I can't believe we have them. You're actually going to be able to use those for months uh, on your own. And you're not going to have to PCS and take all your crap to North Carolina and or Keesler and or wherever it is that we, we are. You're, believe me, you're going to have enough time on the road when you're in the Air Force and when you're in this ST and, and Guardian Angel world, trust me. You're going to get plenty of time on the road. You're going to move plenty of times. I think I'm on move eight at this time in my career, right? So some of the complaints and not saying that they're not valid because I do hear them, but they're spending a whole lot of time there. So the students that are spending that time, you know, after assessment selection and they're waiting, you know, for the PJs, they're waiting on going to paramedic or, you know, for the controllers and, and the SR guys and gals and Stows and Swos and everybody else that's there, they're all waiting on going to these schools, right? So one of the complaints was, and I won't say who it is. I'll just give a little wink. Got you, buddy. I told you we'd address it. Uh, it's just, hey, you know, when we're here, like there's no downtime. The grind of being in those spaces every single day, the same schedule, man, it gets tough. And if you're at Joint Base San Antonio for a long time, you could love the base and you could love the spaces. But of course, that's going to be one of those things where you feel like the monotony of training day in and day out. Um, you know, trying, I'll, I'll let you expound on it there. I mean, that, I mean, that's it. It's the monotony gets people, you know, and, and uh, it's a, it's a, it can be a tough place to be for long periods of time. And sometimes there's a, a whole bunch of people that are going to quit or have quit in the area walking around. And then, you know, like in jail, you have a jailhouse lawyers. You also have, you know, people that run their suck about stuff that they're not, they don't know anything about in the dorms all the time. So there's, there's a lot of negativity that floats around, uh, but it, you know, you just can't get caught up in all that stuff. You just got to ignore it.